All right, so the next problem I had was problem 38. It says that we have a box with mass m is being drug across a level floor with a frictional coefficient of mu by a rope that is pulled at an angle theta above the horizontal with a magnitude of f. So here we have our level floor. We have our box of mass m being pulled with a rope of angle theta with a magnitude f. And we have our frictional coefficient of mu. Alrighty, so the first thing we want to do is start to, well first it asks us to obtain an expression for the magnitude required to pull the box at constant speed. So first we want to just put a little free body diagram in the middle here and then define our different axes. So we know right away that the box's weight is pulling it straight down. So that's going to be its mass times gravity. And then we know that the frictional force is going to be pulling it perpendicular to the surface that we're working with. So that's going to be N, you know, the normal force. And then um, in the direction of the force, the uh, second axis we need to define is the direction of the force. So that's going to be parallel with our rope. And um, because this does have a y component, that's going to be the magnitude of force times sine theta. And then our force that, you know, again, because of Newton's third law, we have our equal and opposite force here. That is also going to be a frictional force from the floor. So let's just dig right into this. We're asked to define a expression used to find the magnitude of force required to pull the box at constant speed. So let's just start with uh, Newton's third law, where for every action we have an equal and opposite reaction. So that means that all of the forces in our y direction are going to be equal to each other. And then we just define both sides here. Ah, excuse me. So we know that uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we can just define that on this side. Our mass times our acceleration is going to be equal to these two forces here, both of the forces going in our y direction. So that's going to be n plus f sine theta. And now we need to define what our acceleration is because it is not going straight down. It's not simply the acceleration of gravity. But we can find that acceleration from uh, taking uh, the, the sine of theta. So we have our mass times gravity times the sine of theta. And that will give us the acceleration in that direction uh, versus just the acceleration of gravity. Um, and then that again is just equal to n plus f sine theta. Since all of these are defined up here, we didn't need to do anything more on that front. So now, uh, what, we're, what we want to do is go ahead and get our n value here alone because we'll plug that into an equation later. So we have n is equal to f sine theta minus mass gravity, mass times gravity times the sine of theta. Oh wait, it's the other way around. I apologize. So that's going to be mass times gravity times the sine of theta minus f times the sine of theta. Alrighty, and now we want to use Newton's third law for the x component of our force here. The force that's dragging us actually across the floor. So, again, that's going to be the sum of our forces in the x direction are equal to zero. And then we, um, because this force is actually dealing with our friction, we're going to use that the, uh, the, form, the Newtonian formula for friction is mu x times n. Um, and we're going to plug that in in here. So because this is just dealing 
with the x-axis alone, there's no y component, we can just say that our force, sum of our forces is F times the cosine of theta is equal to our um, our mu times n. And then uh, we just want to subtract this across here so we can get everything equal to zero and then plug the, the value for n from here in. So we have f times the cosine of theta, again that's just giving us the x component of our force, minus mu x times n is equal to zero. And so now we just want to plug our n from here into this equation. So that's going to give us f cosine theta minus uh, mu x times mass times gravity times the sine of theta minus f sine theta. Whew. And then what we want to do is find this right here, the magnitude of this force. So that's how, which is equal to zero. So that's really nice for us because then we can just uh, add this part of the equation across and divide by cosine. So that'll give us that the magnitude of our force to pull this box at constant speed is going to be equal to mu x times the mass times the acceleration of gravity over cosine theta minus mu x times the sine of theta, and that'll give us the magnitude of force, and we'll need this equation in part b, which I'm going to do in another video because I'm already out of room.